Today we are going to talk about a different Christmas. My mother went to the flea market today in the morning. The flea market is el mercado de pulgas. Just to be clear, it's the place where you can find second use, uh, second hand uh, goods, uh, cosas usadas. Um, she was so proud when she came back to the house today in the morning because she came back with 20 toys con 20 juguetes and she told me, guess how much money I spent on this? And I was like, I don't know, like 200 soles? She told me 80 soles. And why I was surprised? Because my cousin, he spent 300 soles in just one fucking doll to my nephew. And my mother for just five soles, she got a lot of dolls, a lot of toys. So that gave me the idea that maybe we should remake Christmas. We understand that Christmas is basically is not a Jesus Christ day. It's a capitalism day. So why not try to improve Christmas and make it a really family friendly occasion? a family-friendly moment where we can interact with our people and also where we can really enjoy that day. So that is going to be, to be today's episode. By the way, this episode will be recorded in Spanish maybe in seven days, so you have information here in advance on Spotify Uncle Balta. So time to get started. First, here's my Uncle Balta ideas for a perfect, beautiful Christmas. We should put a cap of how much money people will spend. If you check... Why people spend a lot of money on gift? Not because they want to spend money, but because they expect the other person to do the same for you. So that's why you need to spend like 100 soles, 200 soles on each gift. If we put a cap, and by the way, what is a cap? A cap is un máximo. So we are going to, to play Secret Santa, Amigo Secreto, with my people from my university. And we have a minimum of of a uh, of uh, money that we can invest on. The minimum is 50 soles. But let's try to do the opposite on Christmas. Let's try to do a cap of maximum 50 soles. So we are rewarding the creativity over the money. So if you want to give to give the best gift as possible, you need to be creative because you only have 50 soles to spend. That is my first idea. The second is that we need to improve this idea that we need to eat all the food that we can until we are close to explode. That we need to ingest like 10,000 calories in one night. That shit cannot keep happening during Christmas Eve uh, meal. And for that, my Aunt Bertha, she gave us a beautiful solution. And the solution was simple, was because we used to have the meal at midnight, a la medianoche. And one day, Aunt Bertha told us, why we don't start the meal at 8 p.m.? So at the end of the meal, we open the presents. At 12, we say hello to, to all the family and then everybody bye-bye. And that was a better solution. Why it makes a difference if you eat earlier or later? If you wait until midnight to have the meal, you are going to be eating to penetón, all, to bullshit, all your bullshit food before. And then you're going to have the Christmas meal. So it's going to be too many calories. If you want to reduce that, you can start the meal earlier at 8. Um, here is a, a bonus tip. Try to have as many, as much as protein as possible. Try to start with the turkey, con el pavo, with the whatever, with the pig, with, with whatever you want to have, but in protein, chicken, meat, whatever. And after that, you go for the carbohydrates. Most of the people make the opposite mistake. And when you eat protein, you are full. You, you get full faster. But if you start with the carbohydrates, now you want to eat like motherfucker. If you want to really pay attention to your diet, because I will highly suggest you to do that, I can tell you most of the people that I know, they are fat close to become obese. And obesity and being fat is not cool. So just by cutting the liquid calories, you will be surprised because the, the liquid calories are the worst thing. It's not the same um, 100 calories that come from food than 100 calories that come from liquid. When I say liquid, I'm talking about uh, la gaseosa, soda, the chocolate milk. Please, we are in summer. People will still eat, uh, drink their chocolate milk. But try to reduce the liquid calories just by doing that. And you know, th the key here, and some people don't like when I see this, but this is the difference between you having a huge love handle and you having eight uh, uh, apps. And it's don't eat the fucking panetón. <laughs> I was talking with my friend Carlitos today in the morning. We had um, a beautiful workout. Today was chest back. And we were talking and he told me, Jose, you know in one they have uh, Italian 
panettons that are above 100 soles. And I was like, holy crap, more than 100 soles. He told me there is one that is 180, 180 soles. In my, so why the panettone is so expensive? Just because it has a better package. And he told me that panettone has more than 20 ingredients. And that's something that we need to pay attention. Whenever a meal, a food has a lot of ingredients that you don't understand them, try to stay away from that thing. Panetón is worse than bread. El panetón es peor que el pan. So, if you really love yourself, don't have even one slice because that is poison. Panetón is poison. You don't want that. And we know how panetón works. There is no way to have just one slice of it. If you eat one, you are going to go all in with the panetón. And you know how I know that? Because long time ago, in the year 2003, when I started, before I started going to the gym, I used to do, um, I used to eat one panetone per day with my father. We, we went half and half. I gained 13 kilos, engordé 13 kilos in just one month having panetone. So I know you're only going to have panetone one month, but still having panetone on, on Christmas and on New Year's Eve is not healthy. So please try to, try to cut those fucking ugly calories. And it's interesting that I'm telling you not to eat a, uh, junk food because honestly for me on my business as you know i sell supplements the highest day that i have selling fat burners in the year is 20 25th december december 25th el 25 de diciembre that that is my secret during since i started selling supplements in the year 2010 until this year every 25th k25 i got a lot of sales because everybody feels guilty so don't do that and remember if, we, if you go back in time, remember that episode of what is the difference between a hobby and, a, and an addiction? And the difference is that the hobby makes you feel good while you're doing the activity and post-activity. The addiction, you feel good during the activity, but you feel like shit after that. And if you analyze eating panetone, drinking soda, drinking too much alcohol, that is not that is an addiction. It's like... The worst addiction is the, is the sugar because people think it's not an addiction. And I was reading a book and they mentioned this. Whenever, if you are going to, to eat sugar, try to do it as, you, as if you were doing cocaine because it's basically the same addiction that you will create. This, this second part, I want to go deeper now in the family. We have been talking about saving money on gift. By the way, an extra tip here. If you want to buy, uh, because my friend Carlitos asked me the tip of the flea market. Me pidió el dato del mercado de pulgas. If you want to buy gift in the flea market, you can be creative in the package. You can do a nice package. So it's not going to have the original box, but you can create a box for your nephews, for your niece. And that will give an extra value and you will save a lot of money. Instead of spending 1,000 soles in gift, you can spend 80 soles in gift. But go, let's go to the next, to the next um, part, that is family. I truly believe that we should make proud our older relatives. Whenever I have a reunion, usually what happens? The young people want to brag, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Let's try to feel proud, the old people, by talking about them. For example, when we are with all the family, I talk about my uncle Alfredo, that he do crazy things, so I mention him. I talk about Isabel, how <laughs> long time ago my mother, someone was stealing the, the brand logo, el logo del Volvain Gold. Someone was stealing the Volvain logo and the, the criminal, he took the logo. And when he had the logo in the hand, my mother saw him and she yelled at the motherfucker and he gave it back to my mother. So those stories are cool to remember because it's a nice way to tell the old people, hey, you know, I admire you and I thank you and I appreciate all the time that you put, all the effort that you gave us uh, to you if you are the son or if you are the nephew or whatever. Let's try to help and talk with the old people and let's try to put the fucking cell phone in another place. Uh, something that uh, will surprise you and I, I heard this on a podcast is the importance of taking the word, tomar la palabra. I don't know if this happened to you, but... Most of the time in my family, whenever they say, oh, someone that wants to share a word, alguien que quiera compartir una palabra, and usually we are waiting. Oh, somebody else will say something. But you know what happened? We are in the age that we are the ones that are supposed to give the words. 
So today, for first time in my life, I share a word with the family. Whenever they say like, oh, someone to, to share something, I say, yeah, I want to say something. And what I said was this, was like, first, I congratulate them because none of them were using the cell phone. And that surprised me. Nobody was using the cell phone. So I tell them, I want to congratulate you for that. And also because you remember that the big picture is more important than the small Instagram picture. So always let's pay attention to the real life because that is the memory that we will have. The picture is just some pixels, but the memory of the people around you is the real deal. Let's try to remember that. And also, let's remember that you cannot judge a book by its cover. You can have an idea in the first chapters, but are the last chapters that really make the difference. So I told that to the family and they were surprised. They don't know that I took that phrase from Raymond Reddington in Netflix, in Blacklist. <laughs> I took that phrase from a criminal in, in, in Netflix. But what I'm trying to go is if you share a word with them, you are letting them know that you care about the family. And second, you are bringing important messages and you are telling people, you know, I really appreciate your time. That's why I want to talk. I want to say something. The last thing here, and this one is important to remember, is that we live in a moment that everything is politics. Everything is politics. You can talk about economy and people think that it's politics. You talk about security. Oh, politics. You talk about transgender. It's politics. I was reading an article about that. And they say how to avoid political issues or discussions in the family. And I will say the best way is to talk about each person. So how are you doing? Don't, let's not talk about the country, how the economy, no, no. How are you doing? I want to know about you, how your business is doing. How is your health going? How um, your family, everything okay? Then when you have to talk, hey, by the way, I found these opportunities. I'm learning about this. So the conversation is scale. We have a better quality of conversation. And that will make a difference family. Nowadays, uh, especially with the um, social media, it's like everybody have their own world. Like they eat together and then they go back to their own world. No, let's try to forget that. Let's connect and let's remember that the difference between the middle class and the poor people and the rich people is that the rich know how to network even within the family. So let's not, don't, let's not do it just for the family. Also, let's do it because it makes sense. Uh, the last part is, is that Nowadays, I don't know how, how old are you, I'm 35, but I can tell you when I was before my 25 years, before my 28 years, I didn't pay attention to family reunions. I was like, okay, it's a family reunion, that's it. But now I understand something, that in some decades, in algunas décadas, I'm going to remember this reunion, each of these reunions. And that, those are going to be my highlights, are not going to be the video that got 1 million views, it's not going to be the meme that got a thousand of shares. No, no, no. It's going to be the reunion when we were together with the family. It's going to be each joke that we made with the family. That is going to be the real memory. And that's why we need to pay attention and enjoy their moment. I upload a picture today to my Instagram, to my Facebook with, with my cousins. Imagine how, how is the thing. Today was the first time in our story, in our, in our life. In primera vez en nuestras vidas that we have a picture, all the cousins together. We are uh, five, seven. We are seven cousins. And it's the first time that we have a, a picture together because always there were two or three missing. So that was nice. That was a gift from God to us. And we cannot forget God. Um, Christmas is, is Jesus' day. It's a baby Jesus' day. Um, I can tell you like... God is always there. God is everything. We don't ask things to God. No le pedimos cosas a Dios. We only say thank you. And we only, if we have to ask something, is please help me, tell me how to teach me how to help. That's the only thing that we need to ask God. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, spread the word. Tell the people to go to Spotify. You will find me with my nickname, Uncle Barta. And if you want to join Inglés para Cholos or if you want to schedule a call one-to-one -one with me, you can do it directly to my WhatsApp, más 51 98 90 23 986.